Update on the Broco Barquetta this week. Spoiler alert, it's a little less Broco. But only a little bit. So just a quick update uh, this week on the car. Um, there's been a couple of things that I've, I've managed to fix. I didn't bother making videos on them because they, they took, in, in both cases, just a matter of minutes. So the first thing I was able to fix uh, was just something that was super annoying, and that was the, uh, the fuel filler flap. Uh, turns out that the, the part that was there uh, that they were using as a latch, I don't even know if that was even a car part, let alone a Ferrari part. So a new one was $42. I found one on eBay in perfect condition. I replaced it and sure enough, it works. Oh, and by the way, the, uh, the reason why it wasn't opening on its own was that the, the little spring that, that opens up the flap uh, just had slipped off for some reason. So uh, it was about a, a five minute job in total and $42. Um, I also had to replace the front hood shock, uh, the, the front shocks for the trunk lid, uh, whatever you want to call it, the boot lid, uh, because I'm going to be doing a fair amount of work under there because the pedals, uh, to do all of the work for the pedals, I have to remove the brake booster and the brake master cylinder along with the pedal box and uh, so that is going to be that's going to be job one for the five speed manual conversion so um, and along those lines I, I did want to talk about uh, my philosophy and, and how I'm going to approach this so uh, the the first order of business is going to be to convert the car to a five speed manual and then address why the car isn't running well and the reason for that is that the reason why the car I'm almost 100 percent sure is not running well is because it's been sitting for a long time it had a broken actuator for the F1 shifter and that made the car that laid the car up for a long time it was with a mechanic and then it's clear by the way that this car was put back together that the previous owner just gave up on the car now this happens a lot in, in um, exotic car ownership and actually just regular car ownership too where somebody just hits the wall and they just refuse to spend another cent on a car and they just say get rid of it and then what the mechanic does is he usually just cobbles the car back together with spit and bailing wire, as we used to say. And uh, that's really what this car is about. So there's they're like little things that are missing, like some of the screws on the air boxes are missing. Like he just put like three instead of four of them. Uh, a couple of other things on the, on the shroud that goes around the... Uh, the coolant, things like that, you could tell that this car was cobbled back together after the previous owner just gave up. So that's, um, so anyway, that's, that's kind of the, the story with the car. Get the, get the six speed manual working, uh, everything uh, working as far as the six speed goes, and then worry about uh, the car. Also the engine, because uh, once the engine is running well, I want to be able to drive the car around at that stage at that stage because if if i have to park the car again if i get the engine running well and then i park it because i'm converting it to a manual then it'll start running bad again so um uh last time i started i tried to start it two days ago it started up but it it ran so bad it, every time i start this car it runs worse than the last time and so that tells me that's actually good news. That tells me that it's it's actually the gas that's uh, that's really bad. Although it doesn't smell too bad, I I assume that it's th these cars hate to sit. Ferraris hate to sit. Everybody says that, and I think I'm finding that out. So I have one uh, little project for today, and uh, it's the counterbalance. And let's get to it. Okay, so a bit of Ferrari part show and tell. So, as I mentioned, most of the, uh, the parts that I, I was able to find uh, were new, but there's a handful of uh, parts that I had to buy used, and uh, among them was this, uh, this is the counterbalance. So, this is the shift rod for a Ferrari 355. And if it looks low tech, uh, you're right, actually. It, this kind of reminds me of something that I would use to stoke uh, wood in my fireplace, but be that as it may, this is a factory Ferrari 355 shift rod, and on the end of it, you have this this little this little join joiner here, which has a left hand thread in this direction, and it has a typical right hand thread in this direction. This attaches to 
these two plates, which are separated by an isolator, that's this thing over here, which I was able to find new, as you can see. That's actually a new piece. And the isolator goes in between, and you have these copper bolts. I'm not sure why they selected copper, but nonetheless, they sandwich together like that. And then this, this is the part that goes to the, to the actual, uh, to the gearbox. So uh, this, this is effectively replacing the, uh, the actuator that's, that's broken. So the actuator is a hydraulic piece that does all of this, where this, along with obviously the, uh, the shifter box, is what's going to replace that. So I don't need to clean this up, but slight change of plans. I thought I was going to be sanding and then painting this, uh, but on a closer inspection, it turns out that this is just dirty. So, so this is actually gonna be really easy. Um, I'm gonna put this out of the way, and I have, I have starter fluid, which, just a top tip, if you have starter fluid, you also have brake cleaner. And if you have carb cleaner, you also have brake cl cleaner and starter fluid because it's all the same stuff. So I am basically just going to try and clean it and call it a day because I, I don't want to actually paint this if I can help it because it's original. It's, this, is, this was painted by the factory at some point or by the supplier for the factory. And... Why add a layer of paint if you don't have to? Oh yeah, that's really bad. Actually, this, if you look at that, that's pretty bad. So I think I am going to sand and paint that. So, but these, uh, that's actually not too bad. I don't think it's necessary to, uh, to add a layer of paint. Uh, the paint has chipped in a couple of spots, but it's, this is definitely uh, cadmium plated or something like that, or zinc. There's probably zinc underneath that. So not too bad. I'm not gonna add a layer of paint that it doesn't need, particularly since I'm gonna get it on the threads and you don't want that. Um, but yeah, this, this piece is uh, that's pretty dreadful. So let's sand that one down and clean it. Okay, so just some, I'm not going to go too crazy on this thing. So I basically just have some uh, 100, uh, I believe that's 100 grit sandpaper. And another top tip, earplugs, not just for listening to the Beatles, 007, pop that in. And I'm gonna prime and then paint this one. Nothing fancy, I'm not going too crazy on this. Uh, this is definitely a piece that's... This primer has seen better days. Now I'm gonna let it dry and wait. So it's given it a little bit of time to dry and it looks pretty good. Uh, it's not perfect, but it looks a hell of a lot better than it did before. And, uh, ooh, it doesn't look like it's completely dry yet. Um, but anyway, uh, stay tuned. This has been a really short video this week. And uh, I have some other videos coming along on the other cars. I'm going to have one on uh, what I don't like about the, uh, the V8 Vantage, the Aston Martin V8 Vantage, and uh, also why you should drive a dream car every day. So uh, among some others that are going to be coming down the pike as well, as well as more on the Broco Barchetta. So... Uh, stay tuned and we'll see you next time.